touching me. The Holy Spirit is guiding me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is prayer of grace. And prayer worship is from us to God. I love you, Lord. I love you. I desire you. I want you. I need you. I, I desire you. I worship you. I, I glorify you. So this, this is prayer of worship. And that interactive prayer, it's the faith believing that when we pray to God wholeheartedly, when we pray to God sincerely, God will be happy. So anytime I pray, He will be happy. He will be smiling at me. It's not being proud. It's just saying God is doing what He has promised. Whenever we come to Him, He will come to us. When we dwell in Him, He will dwell in us and He will cause us to bear fruit. So God is a God to to respond to us. He will respond to us. So whenever we pray, we have confidence that He is blessing me, He is responding to me, He is putting His blessing into my life. He, is, uh, he will be using me and He will be filling me, me more and more with the Holy Spirit. Actually, we spend time loving God. Thank you, Father. A special group of people loving God together. Father, we love you. We adore you. We need you. We, we, we want to be with you. We want to serve you. Hallelujah. The more we do this, the more we'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. And God is very happy with us. And the prayer of commitment is saying, Lord, I commit my life to you. I, I'm willing to serve you. I'm willing to glorify you. I'm willing to talk about you to people, tell people about Jesus. So these four kinds of prayer will help our relationship with God. So we also, of course, uh, that, that there is in, uh, intercession, uh, uh, intercessory prayer that we pray for the church, pray for the area. But this four is for building up the relationship with God that we the prayer of grace declare God is loving me God is blessing me God is doing things on me and we totally be believe that and prayer of worship I love you is from us to God I love you I adore you I need you I worship you interactive prayer is that I I know that whenever I pray wholeheartedly when, when I pray sincerely God will respond to me God will come to me God will bless me and a prayer of commitment. I commit my life to you. I dedicate my life to you. I'm willing to serve you. And then, of course, then we pray for, for um, revival of the land. We pray for revival of the church. Pray for the country. That's uh, intercessory prayer. Okay, now we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. That we continue to repent and turn away from all sins. That we know that all sins are destructive. Any kind of sins, any kind of anger, frustration, depression, lust, uh, greed, any kind of sin or, or uh, cheating, telling lies. All these are uh, detested by God. God doesn't like that. So we want to repent and turn away from all sins and love and follow the Bible. Love the Bible. The Word of God is powerful. I trust in the Word of God. And I, I want to follow the Word of God. And believe that God wants to fill us. It's very important. It's not us who takes the initiative. It's God who draws us to Him. God to attract, attract us to Him. He attracts us to come to Him. So God is very happy to fill us. To fill us means that there is a very close relationship with Him. That there is no boundary, no hindrance from a relationship with Him. There's no, nothing stopping it that God can come to us freely and then spend long hours loving God and praying spend long time loving God worshiping God enjoying God and obey God in every area especially the Great Commission and take care of problems in our lives if we have depression if we have anger frustration if we have greed or lust then we won't be filled with the Holy Spirit we must take care of the problems and then laying on of hands by spirit filled persons and spirit-filled meetings are helpful, helpful, but we need to go home and pray more. We don't just depend on meetings. That, but someone who is spirit-filled, lay hand on a person, uh, can bless the person. And uh, also spirit-filled meetings, so everyone is loving God, everyone is worshiping God together. And hunger for spiritual gifts. That, now we don't have to say, okay, I want to be like this pastor. We don't say that, but we say, Lord, whatever you give me, I want, I want it. Whatever it is, I want that spiritual gift from you. And then here is Elijah saying to Elisha, ask, 
What may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. So Elisha hungered for a double portion of the Holy Spirit that was on Elijah. That he wants a double portion of the Holy Spirit. So we want, Lord, I want to be with you. Now it's very important that we put the priority first in a relationship with God. We say, Lord, I want you. I want to be loving you. I want to do your will. I want to glorify you. I want to help people to love you, to like you. To, so we, we don't just say, I want spiritual gifts. We want to God first. And then we want you to whatever spiritual gifts you want to give me, please give to me so that I can use it to glorify you. So we do that spiritual gifts are for God's kingdom. It's not for us. How to use our spiritual gifts? The infilling of the Holy Spirit gives us courage to speak the word, God's word. Now, the courage to speak God's word is also a spiritual gift. So Acts 4.31, when they pray, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So speak the word with boldness, with courage, with motivation, with zeal. That So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, then we, the Holy Spirit will help us to speak the word with energy, with love, and with joy, and with strength. Okay, It doesn't mean... All the time we yell, actually, you know, sometimes it can be gentle. Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful. I love you. I adore you. I enjoy you. Thank you, Jesus. So it can be very mild, very gentle, and sometimes it can be energetic. First do whatever is available to us to serve God. So whatever is available, care for the people around us, Listen to people and respond to their feelings and needs. It's very important when we help people, we don't just push people. We listen to their needs. We care for them. We pray for them. We ask them how they feel. We ask them what they need. And we ask them what I can do for you. So we listen to people and respond to their feelings and their needs. If they are unhappy, instead of saying don't be unhappy, we say I know that in your situation you will be unhappy, that we understand that he is being unhappy. And help people spiritually, help people you know, how to pray, how we can pray to God, and then God is happy with you. Let us pray together, pray together, reach out your hand to God. Father, we love you, we adore you. And then the person, ex you can ask the person, did you experience anything during the prayer? And he says, yes. And then we say, God is uh, blessing you so God is working your life do you want God God to continue bless you and then are you willing to believe in Jesus trust in Jesus as a savior and to love God more and you can be used by God more so we listen to them respond to them and help them spiritually and do evangelism to whoever are around us and pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit so have the courage if a person doesn't have, the, have evil spirit, doesn't have serious sin or serious negative emotions, then he can spend more time praying and then he can pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit. And share our testimonies when there is an, an opportunity that to share the testimony that God has done wonderful things in our life. I want to share with you so that we have all kinds of experiences that we can share with people. And then receive God's guidance by waiting on the Lord. Now, it's very important to receive the direction from God. Now, some people can hear the audible voice of God. Some people just have moving, promptings in the heart that they are prompted to do something. Then we respond to that. Whatever the move of the Holy Spirit is, we respond. Because Jesus said in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice and I know them, and they follow me. So Jesus' sheep would hear Jesus' voice, and then Jesus know, knows us, and then we will follow him. And also, they will lay hand on the sick, and they will recover. So 
in order to build up the laying on of hands, we build up an intimate relationship with God. Now here, this woman, uh, it was in a meeting, I was leading them to experience the Holy Spirit. And then, uh, at one point, this woman was screaming because she might have some, uh, uh, she needs inner healing. She was scre screaming with pain. And I prayed for her, and I prayed for the joy of the Lord, and I said, cry out to God, praise God, love God. And then I prayed for the joy of the Lord upon her. And then she fell, and then she was laughing and laughing. That, so it's, um, we can bring joy or peace or love or healing to people. Uh, that God can do wonderful things in the hearts of people. So we build a relationship with God, intimate relationship, uh, and then take care of any sins and negative things in our life. First, we prepare ourselves to have a close relationship with God and take care of any sin and negative things. And then when we don't detect any evil spirit, even when we pray for a long time to God, uh, uh, with the approval of, pa of our pastor, we can lay hand on people to experience the Holy Spirit. So with the approval of the pastor, after you know, we, we don't have any evil spirit and we don't have serious sin or serious emotional problem, we can start practicing. The pastor can lead people to practice laying a hand on people. And then they might experience something. So laying hand is not just laying hand, but when you lay hand on people, we love God. Father, we love you. We adore you. You're going to do wonderful things in the people's life. Thank you, Jesus. You're doing wonderful things in people's life. And then when we love, love God, and then the Holy Spirit will come down. You know, some people think that in order to, for the uh, Holy Spirit to come, they will shout. They always just shout, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, power, fire. They just think the key, the words, they shout. But to me, it's most important is that to build up the relationship with God. Build up the people's relationship with God. So we draw people's heart to God. We say, God is here. Love God now. Love God now. Cry out to Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I need you. Instead of crying power. Power, they just look at power. Fire, they just look at fire. We don't, don't just look at the experience or the power. We want to look at God. We want to lead people to look at God. God, you're so wonderful. You are loving us. We want to love you. You are always kind uh, to us. And laying on hands can help people experience the Holy Spirit. Acts 8.17 Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So these are people to go on the street and they lay hand on people to experience the Holy Spirit. Now I have done it on the street. I've done it on the street that people experience. You know, one time uh, one person walked by and I said, you know, I, I've shared this with different people on the street. And I said, God is alive now. God, you can experience God. He said, really? I said, yes. And then, um, and then uh, she said, uh, actually, I, I was thinking about two experiences. I want to share about the woman experience first. And the woman said, if you help me to experience the Holy Spirit, I will follow you. Of course, I know that means he followed Jesus. Okay, I said, good, I pray for you. And then after a prayer, I asked her to keep her eyes closed and I asked her, have you experienced anything? She said, yes, I feel peaceful and I feel comfort. I feel joy. I said, then do you want to follow God? He said, let me think about it. Now, sometimes people are late, are not willing but I still do my job and I still tell them about Jesus and His salvation. So I pray for people and they experience the Holy Spirit right on the street. And I've even prayed for people and they fell under the power of God also on the street. That it has happened in different ways. Sometimes people don't, uh, didn't fall, but they experience the peace and the joy and the healing of God. And laying on of hands will help people to experience God's peace, freedom, joy, and love. So that's the first thing that can happen. Now I can name, you know, there are a number of times that I, I was leading meetings, and then there were newcomers, and I lay hand on them. And one time there was one man who was dressed up in a very expensive suit, 
I can see that the suit was very expensive, has very expensive material. And I prayed for that man and he started to cry. And I asked him, have you experienced anything during the prayer? He said, yes. He experienced power like electricity entering him. And I said, God is so good. Are you willing to believe in Jesus? He said, yes. And then I led him to believe in Jesus. So it has happened many times that people are touched by the Holy Spirit and started to cry. And then they experience revival of spiritual life. So when they're a Christian, they can experience revival of the spiritual life and experience physical and inner healing physical healing and bodily healing and free of evil spirit evil spirit being driven out and receive spiritual gifts and have supernatural experiences I pray for some people and they saw Jesus and they saw angels and there are different experiences one time I pray for a woman and she experienced the Holy Spirit and she saw angels and then she saw Jesus holding a baby and she cried for a long time she said she had an abortion a long time ago and Jesus was showing her that Jesus was carrying the baby and she was greatly touched and healed and also we can pray for people to be raised up to serve God some people are willing to serve God so that's how we can bring revival to people when we pray for people first we need to build up a strong relationship with God and turn away from all sins sins can bring evil spirits so we must have a good relationship with God and turn away from sin and the evil spirit and we can pray and sing to lead people to believe that God is loving them and help them to love God we don't need to shout so we can be saying oh Lord you're so wonderful you're so good we are loving you right now we are glorifying you now we trust in you now hallelujah praise the Lord and we don't need to shout now sometimes shouting is fine but don't shout all the time and don't push people just lightly touch them falling does not help people and experiencing God helps you sometimes people may fall down but if they don't fall down don't push I have seen many many pastors when they pray for people they push they want people to fall down to impress people or to impress the person the person was not impressed because the person know that he was being pushed down he did not he know that he was being pushed down he was not experienced the power of God he was experiencing the pastor pushing him so please don't push people we don't have to show people you know some people say I want to show people that I have power, the power of the Holy Spirit that is not the power of the Holy Spirit and we even if we have the power of the Holy Spirit we don't push people one time I, I was leading prayer, I was praying for people in a church. And then one person talked to me, she said, he said, you know when our pastor prayed for us, I saw that he, she was pushing people. But when you pray for people, you just touch them and then they fell down. I said, that's what we should do, we don't push people. And if they fall down, fine, we have someone to catch them or I catch them. But if they don't fall down, it's fine also. I always tell people, you don't look for falling down. You, you look for how you experience the Holy Spirit. We look for glorifying God, not to glorify ourselves. Never. When we serve and we want to glorify ourselves, God doesn't like that. God is not pleased with the ministry. God will not bless the ministry. And I've heard that there are many evangelists they do all kinds of things they charge people money in order to pray for them they sell water that people pray for them uh, that they get the water uh, they have blessed and then they will they have to pay for that everything they do is for money and then they uh, do different things for their own uh, benefit uh, uh, for their own glory so we don't want to do that and we can ask them if they have experienced the Holy Spirit to help them remember the experience and to go back to the same experience when they pray themselves. So after we pray, we say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? If they say, yes, I've experienced peace, then we say, the Bible has said that. Peace I'll give to you. Or joy or love or healing or, or, or uh, demons being driven out. We, we, we tell them this is what... The Bible is promised and God is working your life. So that's wonderful. Do you want to love God more? Do you want to believe in God more? 
Manifestation of Holy Spirit falling down or swaying of the body is supported by the Bible. Revelation 1.17 When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. So this is John in the book of Revelation. He fell down as though dead. And then Acts 9.3 and 4 As Saul prayed near Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed upon around him he fell to the ground so that um, under power of God people can fall and if the power not so strong the person can be swaying sometimes you notice people are swaying under power of God and how people experience the Holy Spirit they can experience peace that's the Bible verse John 14 27 burdens removed Matthew eleven twenty eight. And then body in rest and comfort. Psalm 16 verse 9. My body, my flesh also will rest in hope and love because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts. <clears throat> this is Romans 5.5. 5. <clears throat> and then inner healing. Isaiah 61 to heal the brokenhearted. And physical healing. By stripes we are healed. And demons being driven out. In my name they will cast out demons. And how to drive out demons from people? We help the people. Um, okay, now uh, I think the time is up. So I'm going to stop here. And then next time we'll talk about that. And um, so uh, if you have any questions, please send to me in the WhatsApp. And I'll close with a prayer. So we raise up our hands. Please stand up and raise our hands to God. And we pray together. For God's presence upon us to bless us to strengthen us okay so please close your eyes and raise your hand Heavenly Father we praise you and thank you you're wonderful Lord you're wonderful you're wonderful we love you we worship you we adore you we need you we thank you you're so wonderful hallelujah it's so wonderful to have God Lord we love you Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Please transform our life. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we can have the revival ourselves first. When we love you more, we can have a revival. We can receive the spiritual gifts so that we have a revival and we can serve you with the spiritual gifts and with your love and with your power. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we love you, we adore you, we need you. It's so wonderful to have you. Father, we hold on to you and we know that you are loving us right now. You are blessing us right now as we love you. Come, Holy Spirit. May your power come, your peace come, your love come. Lord, we need you. We need you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. We need you, Father. We need you, Father. We adore you. We worship you. We adore you. We need you. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit and transform our life. Use our life mightily for your glory that will bring more people to believe in Jesus and bring more people to love you. Help more people to serve you and bring a revival to the people around us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so wonderful. You are so wonderful. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you today. Uh, so you can try to use uh, the ways I've taught today to help people experience the Holy Spirit, lead them to Christ, and also uh, uh, help them to have spiritual revival. And then you can uh, write the, your testimony and send it to me. Tell me how you have been praying for people to help them experience the Holy Spirit. And you can record it too. And if it's in English, you can send it to me. Okay, God bless you.